On World News Tonight, variant dominance. South Africa riddled with even more infection as Omicron causes mass infections. Fighting Omicron, Moderna predicts a possible weapon against the dangerous variant with new jabs in the making. Shutdown scramble. The US government tackles frantic funding issues as the opposition rejects vaccine mandates. Mesmerizing dance. Indian classical dancers lay a feast for the eyes in homage to the Sun Temple. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Anuradhi Wickramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. On today's coverage, we start off with updates on the COVID pandemic. South Africa is seeing an increase in COVID-19 reinfections due to the Omicron variant, which is fast overtaking Delta to become the dominant variant in the country. But a scientist studying the outbreak said that symptoms appear to be mild. Omicron is causing an increase in COVID-19 reinfections in South Africa, a scientist studying the new strain has said and is fast overtaking Delta to become the country's dominant variant. Professor Anne von Gottberg, a microbiologist at South Africa's National Institute for Communicable Diseases, was speaking at a World Health Organization press conference on Thursday. Because previous infection used to protect against Delta, and now with Omicron it doesn't seem to be the case. However, she said she and her colleagues believe new infections and reinfections with Omicron would feature less severe symptoms. COVID-19 cases are rising dramatically in South Africa, one of the southern African countries that first detected the variant. Speaking at the same event, the WHO's Regional Emergency Director for Africa, Dr. Salam Gay, said the organization was working closely with countries to step up the response to the new variant. In South Africa, where WSO has already a team working in genomic sequencing. We are deploying a surge team in Gauton projects to support surveillance and contact tracing. But Gay also warned that only 7.5% of Africans have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and that 80% haven't had a single shot. This is dangerously wide gap. Many countries have imposed travel bans on passengers from Southern Africa. African leaders have protested, saying they are being punished for their transparency in reporting data on Omicron. On Thursday, Ghana said it had detected the new strain in 34 samples from travellers who returned to the country between November 21st and 25th, but gave no further details about those who were tested. India has detected its first cases of the Omicron variant, both in the southern state of Karnataka, as the government is pressured to urge more widespread testing. Let's cross over to other there in the world news. Special correspondent Gayathri Gunasekara from Delhi in India. Gayathri? Yes, Sanradi. India reported its first two cases of the Omicron coronavirus variant, but the government said it had no immediate plan to authorize booster vaccine shots, despite demands from the lawmakers in the parliament. Health Ministry said two male patients with the new COVID-19 variant aged 66 and 46 years were showing mild symptoms but declined to provide their vaccine or travel history citing their privacy. Health official Love Agrawal stated that all primary contacts and secondary contacts of both cases have been traced and are being tested, adding the men were in the southern state of Karnataka. Local media reported that five contacts of one of them had also tested positive of the variant. India was set to restart international flights on December 15, but scrapped that plan and said that a resumption date would be announced in due course. Back to you, Anradi. All right, thank you. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Gayatri Gunasekhar reporting from Delhi in India. Top scientific advisors said Omicron could become the dominant COVID-19 variant in France by the end of January, after both France and the United States reported their first cases and countries around the world tighten curbs. For further details, other there in a World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna joins us now from Normandy in France. Chetana? Anuradi. French government adviser Jean-Francois Delfrezi said this true enemy for now was still the Delta variant spreading in a fifth wave. France will require all visitors from countries outside the EU to provide a negative COVID test result on entry to the country regardless of vaccination status. 
government spokesman Gabriel Attell confirmed that the test result requirement, which affects Britons among other non-EU travellers, would be added soon. The test result can be from either a PCR or an antigen test, but must be from within the 48 hours of travel. Travellers from fellow EU member states can still enter France with proof of vaccination or a recovery certificate alone. The news coincides with the beginning of France's popular ski season, leaving many travellers scrambling to arrange tests before travel this weekend. Back to you on, back to you on Rod. All right, thank you. That was Other Than the World News special correspondent Chetana Dharmaratan reporting from Normandy in France. Facing a new threat from the Omicron variant, U.S. President Joe Biden laid out a plan to ramp up the federal response to the health crisis. This comes as the United States has now reported cases in four states. Tonight, expected, but still unnerving. More cases of the Omicron variant detected inside the U.S. New York officials calling a news conference this evening to announce Omicron is there. Add Colorado to California and Minnesota. Today, officials identified Omicron in a Denver area woman who returned after a tour in Southern Africa. She was fully vaccinated, but had not received a booster. Today in Minnesota, Governor Tim Walz tried to offer reassurance. That case involves a Minneapolis area man, vaccinated and boosted, who had traveled to New York City, where he attended an anime convention last month, held at the Javits Center, the very place that had once served as a COVID field hospital. Convention goers urged to get tested. New York Governor Kathy Hochul. We do anticipate there'll be more cases, but to the extent that they are mild, we'll address them. This is not cause for alarm. From the president today, a visit to the National Institutes of Health to reboot his plan for winter COVID. We're going to fight this variance with science and speed, not chaos and confusion. One new benefit, the cost of in-home COVID tests will be reimbursable through your private health insurance, expected to begin in late January. Plus, 50 million free tests will be distributed to community sites and rural areas. A change in travel requirements. All passengers flying to the U.S. from foreign countries must have a negative COVID test within 24 hours, down from three days. Establishing new family vaccination clinics so children, adults and seniors can get their shots together. A milestone today. The White House says nearly 2.2 million doses went into arms, including more than 1 million booster shots, the largest 24-hour total in more than six months. As science learns more about the risks of the Omicron variant, doctors warn the winter season is already a dangerous time. On the latest update of the vaccine development, the company president of Moderna said that they could have a COVID-19 booster shot targeting the Omicron variant tested and ready to file for U.S. authorization as soon as March. The same day the first confirmed U.S. case of the Omicron coronavirus variant surfaced in California, Moderna said it could have a booster targeting the new COVID-19 variant as soon as March. Moderna President Stephen Hode says his company's already working on that booster program. He told he believes booster shots carrying genes, specifically targeting mutations in the variant, would be the fastest way to address any anticipated reductions in vaccine efficacy it may cause. He said Moderna is also working on a multivalent vaccine that would include up to four different variants, including Omicron, a process that could take several more months. In Washington this week, the U.S.'s top infectious disease official, Dr. Anthony Fauci, said it could take two weeks or more to find out how easily the variant spreads from person to person and whether it can bypass the protections provided by vaccines. The molecular profile of the kinds of mutations that you see would suggest, A, that it might be more transmissible and that it might elude some of the protection of vaccines. But we don't know that now. We don't know what the, what, the, what the constellation of mutations are actually going to be. We have to be prepared that there's going to be a diminution in protection. Back in Moderna, Hode said he believes the current vaccines will be able to slow, if not stop, the Omicron variant. The company is testing to see whether fully vaccinated recipients of Moderna's vaccine and those receiving boosters 
are protected against the variant. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Government funding runs out at midnight in the U.S. and congressional leaders have a deal in place to extend it until mid-February. But a small group of Senate Republicans is threatening to derail it over President Biden's vaccine and testing mandate for businesses. Tonight, Congress lurching towards a government shutdown the leaders of both parties now scrambling to avoid. Federal government funding runs out Friday at midnight. Congressional leaders have a deal in place to extend it until mid-February. But a small group of Senate Republicans say they'll derail that deal unless they get a vote on defunding President Biden's vaccine and testing mandate for businesses, currently blocked by federal courts. I don't want to shut down the government. The only thing I want to shut down is Congress funding enforcement of an immoral, unconstitutional vaccine mandate. I'll be doggone if I'm going to get rolled on this right now without a fight. The group's stalling strategy frustrating their fellow Republican lawmakers who have slammed the plan as highly unlikely to work. Ultimately, we're going to fund the government, and I don't see the, uh, this hostage as uh, one that we should take. But leaving President Biden unbothered. There is a plan in place unless somebody decides to be totally erratic and I don't think uh, that will So I don't think we'll be safe. Thank you. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned Moscow of the severe costs Russia would pay if it invaded Ukraine, urging his Russian counterpart to seek a diplomatic exit from the crisis. It takes two to tango. And if, if uh, our Russian friends are prepared to implement their commitments under Minsk, and our Ukrainian friends are as well, we will fully support that, and that is the best way to avert a renewed crisis uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken meeting with his Russian counterpart, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, in Stockholm on Thursday and warning him face to face of serious consequences in the form of sanctions if Russia's military launches an invasion of its ally. Lavrov here responding that NATO is drawing closer to Russia's borders and that the nightmare scenario of a military confrontation is returning. It's a diplomatic meeting on neutral ground. Hands are being shaken. The two men refer to each other by their first names. But make no mistake, the Ukraine crisis is still the main flashpoint in the relationship between Russia and the West, at the worst level in the three decades since the end of the Cold War. A senior U.S. official told Reuters that there were no breakthroughs at the Blinken-Lavrov meeting, although both sides agreed to keep the dialogue going. And it's likely going to be intense. Meanwhile, the crisis in Eastern Europe continues. Both sides accuse each other of ceasefire violations. Vladimir here, who did not want to give us his last name, says the gunfire usually starts late in the afternoon. He says he's spent eight years in these trenches and hasn't seen his family in ages. The Russian government said on Thursday that it's arrested three suspected Ukrainian operatives, including one planning a bombing using homemade devices, which Ukraine's government has dismissed as a trumped-up charge. Russian media are reporting that Moscow hopes a meeting between Presidents Biden and Putin can happen soon. In the latest update of the election run in France, France's conservative Les Républicains whittled down its five presidential candidates to two in the first round of the party primary, with right-wing Southern MP Eric Ciotti and head of the Paris region Valérie Pécresse progressing to a runoff. In a vote restricted to card-carrying party members, the hardline candidate came out on top. Eric Ciotti, tough on immigration and nationalistic, believes he's the man to reverse what he perceives to be France's decline. I wanted this campaign to be about reality, the reality of a country that's in the process of being downgraded, in decline, and about clarity in our alliances, whether yesterday, today or tomorrow, we will never ally with Macron, and about being brave enough to break from the past. He'll be facing Valérie Pécresse in the second round starting this Friday. The Paris region president represents the historic party line, economically liberal, but still tough when it comes to executive rule. 
For several months now, I have been traveling across France, and I've noticed an irrepressible urge for pride, for order, but also for justice and freedom. I feel backed by the French citizens who demand respect, truth, and action. Pécresse has already received the backing of the three eliminated first-round candidates. But whoever comes out victorious at the end of the second round on Saturday, they'll have to unify a party divided between hardliners and moderates, and still scarred by the first-round exit of its candidate in 2017, François Fillon. Germany's military honored outgoing Chancellor Angela Merkel with its highest tribute for a civilian, playing an eclectic mix of music for her own choice that has intrigued the nation. Marching to the beat of her own tune, in typical Angela Merkel fashion, the outgoing Chancellor said her farewell to the 70s punk song titled You Forgot the Color Film by East German singer Nina Hagen. It's a throwback to Merkel's teenage years growing up in communist-era Germany. The song was a highlight of my youth. The song also came from East Germany, and coincidentally, it is still played in a region that used to be my constituency, so everything fits. The farewell ceremony takes place at night in Berlin headquarters of the Ministry of Defense. Soldiers typically march in full uniform and perform music pieces selected by the outgoing honoree. Merkel will be succeeded at the chancellery by Olaf Scholz, a member of the Social Democratic Party. She will serve as interim chancellor until Scholz announces a new government by mid-December. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. According to the World Health Organization, Asia-Pacific countries must prepare for a new surge in COVID-19 cases led by the Omicron variant and remain vigilant. Malaysia has detected its first case of the Omicron coronavirus variant in a foreign student who was quarantined after arrival from South Africa two weeks ago. The International Olympic Committee released a preliminary set of health protocols for the upcoming Winter Games in Beijing that suggested that the next Olympics set to start on February 4th could be the most extraordinarily restricted large-scale supporting event since the start of the COVID pandemic. Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi called on China and Vietnam to promote the sustained, healthy and stable development of the bilateral comprehensive strategic partnership of the corporation. Alec Baldwin denied responsibility for the fatal shooting of a cinematographer on the set of his western movie Rust, saying he would have killed himself if he believed it was his fault. According to a published survey, Tel Aviv is the most expensive city to live in, as soaring inflation has pushed up living costs globally. They say the best things in life are free, but that's becoming less of a reality here in Tel Aviv. According to a survey by The Economist, the Israeli city has topped the charts to become the world's most expensive city to live in. Thanks to rising inflation and supply chain costs, Tel Aviv climbed from five places last year to take the top spot. But for its residents, they feel the city's soaring costs are burning a hole in their pockets. I just visited my daughter and I can buy anything in Manhattan, in Chelsea, or the Upper West Side for a quarter of the price, which is ridiculous. I go to the supermarket and I don't believe it. I once told a friend that he should not leave the house in Tel Aviv without 200 shekels, around 55 euros, in his pocket. It's a lot of money. The survey also showed that on average, prices have risen 3.5% in local terms, the fastest inflation rate recorded over the past five years. Last year's joint winners, Paris, Singapore and Zurich, have now been bumped down the rankings, with Hong Kong rounding up in fifth place. Tel Aviv's position this year is partly due to price increases for transport and groceries, and also currency fluctuations that caused the property market to skyrocket. In contrast, neighbouring city Damascus was listed as the world's cheapest city. And finally tonight, Indian classical dancers mesmerised visitors at the famous Konak Sun Temple of Eastern India's Odisha state. The evening featured Satriya dance that originated in the medieval era. At the program, the dancers depicted devotion to Lord Krishna. 
Satriya dance is known to be the only living dance as it has been performed in the medium of devotion daily in the Satras for 600 years. The latter half hosted an Odissi dance performance focused on five Hindu goddesses namely of warriors, educators, wealth, motherhood and love. Another Odissi performance was presented in the form of a prayer to the sun god encouraging it to rise and shine. Indian classical dance form of Odissi is believed to have been originated in temples and is predominantly performed by women for expressing religious stories and spirituality. It uses symbolic costumes, body movement, expressions and gestures, also sign language. In case you have missed any of the stories we aired tonight, you can re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash other there in English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. We'll be back again on Monday with another edition of World News. I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Till then, stay safe and have a great weekend.